probably know that air pollution is bad for your lungs, but did you know that it's a major risk factor for heart disease, the leading cause of death worldwide? We usually focus on diet or exercise to prevent heart disease, but we can't escape air pollution. It's all around us. The link between air pollution and death was established in a series of disasters around the world. On Friday, December 5, 1952, stagnant weather trapped a thick sulfurous smoke from the coal furnaces in the city of London. Children and elders died at a particularly alarming rate. All told, 12,000 people died, half as many that died from aerial bombings in London during World War II. Air pollution has declined since then, but it still accounts for about 8% of all deaths in London. Air pollution isn't made up of one thing, it's a cocktail of toxic gases and particles. These minuscule particles are comprised of a complex mixture of carcinogens, sulfates, nitrates, elemental carbon, and toxic metals like lead and arsenic. It's hard to imagine the size of these particles. It helps to compare it with the width of a human hair or a grain of sand. The size of a particle has a big impact on its toxicity. Small particles, like those smaller than 2.5 microns, penetrate deep into the lungs and set off a cascade of systemic inflammation. Each of these particles is invisible, but collectively they create a dense, visible smog that is deadly. About 15% of all deaths in the world are from ischemic heart disease. That's when your heart literally suffocates. Let's look at how the different levels of PM2.5, measured as micrograms of particles per cubic meter, are linked with heart disease in three cities. In Vancouver, which has an average concentration of seven, two out of a hundred deaths from heart disease are linked with airborne particles. In London, which has a concentration of 16, it's 15 out of a hundred. And in Beijing, which has a concentration of 56, 27 out of a hundred. Let's look at more cities around the world. Now we'll sort them by how bad the air pollution is, with the worst levels on the right. As the particle levels increase, the percent of deaths from heart disease rises sharply, even at levels below the World Health Organization guidelines. Surprisingly, the greatest increase is at the lowest levels of exposure. There is no evidence of a threshold or safe level of particles. No matter where you live, reducing the level of particles would reduce the number of people dying from heart disease. If we decrease particles around the world to levels found in Vancouver, we could prevent three million excess deaths every year. The first step to prevent heart disease is to identify the sources of toxic particles. The major sources are motor vehicles, industry, coal-fired power plants, as well as the use of wood, dung, and other fuels for cooking and heating. But they vary considerably from city to city. The key to protecting people is to produce less air pollution. We need to consume less, promote cleaner technologies, regulate sources of pollution, and redesign our cities. We need to expand public transportation and build paths for cycling and walking. We need to build schools, childcare centers, and neighborhoods away from highways and large roadways and create more parks and green space. Just think about it. If every city around the world took these steps, we would be closer to fulfilling our right to a healthy environment.